Hi everyone, welcome to the fifth module of Verilog SDL Crash Course. In this module, we are going to cover Verilog SDL Oprints. So let's get started. So first of all, we will see literals. So literals are constant valued oprints that can be used in Verilog expressions. So there are some kind of constant value oprints and which are called nothing but literals. And literals are basically two types which are string and number constant string and a constant number so a string literal is one dimensional array of characters enclosed in double quotes and a constant number specified it can be specified in binary octal or decimal or an in hexadecimal so here is an example so we can have a number literal defined like this anticaf ddd where n is nothing but integer representing number of bits if it is a 5 that means this number is a constant number is a 5 bit value and the f f defines one of four possible base formats and those base formats can be a binary format octal format decimal or an hexadecimal and default if nothing is defined it will be treated as a decimal number and ddd these are nothing but legal digits for the base format so now let's see one example so here we have a time each so here it is nothing but a string literal, its type is time. And we have a value 267, this is nothing but a decimal number, then we have a binary number, we have a hexadecimal number and we have a octal number. So the oprints which are a string or a constant value are called nothing but literals. Now let's see the another type of lit, uh, oprints. So in Verilog SDL we can have other oprints which can be type of wire, register or parameters. So a register can be declared as we as we have also covered in our previous module uh, of data type. We have also covered that a register oprint can be declared something like this. This is a scalar quantity and this is a vector quantity and a wire we can declare like this and this is the way we can declare a parameter. So a B and C, these are nothing but operands of type register and C is type of wire. And we can also have a parameter type of operand which is nothing but here N. So as we know that operands are nothing but the entity on which the operation has to be performed. So if you take if you take an example here assign C equal to A plus B here A and B are operands. So A and B are operands of type register. Now let's see the Third type of operand which are bit select or a part select operands. Uh, so a specific bit in a vector signal can be treated as a operand and a part of that signal can also be treated as a operand and that can be type of wire register or parameters. Let's see now the syntax. So we can have a variable name and a particular bit and here is a variable and or basically let's call them a operand. So there is a specific bit of that operand and this is a specific part of that operand. So how these kind of operands can be used in expressions? See you can we see we have a, a and b. This is a and b are nothing but variables of type register. And here if you see they are working as an operand. And a particular bit of operand a and a particular bit of operand b is nothing but used as an operand in this expression and here if you see a, a part of that operand is used in this expression so this is how we can use a specific bit or a part of an operand in the expression now the next type of operand is nothing but a function call so this is an important point here the return value of a function can be used directly in an expression without first assigning it to a register or wire variable. What does it mean is a function name can be directly used as an operand. So now let's see the syntax. Syntax is nothing but the function name and the argument we are going to pass to the function. And how we can use this function as an operand? Here is an example. So you can see here assign a equal to b and c and check b and c. So this is a function here and we are passing b and c as an argument to the function. Now, what is the meaning of this? Whenever we are calling this function, this function will return a value and that value will be used 
in the AND operation. So here you, if you see the definition of this function check bc, this is the function definition where we have to input to the function c and b and check bc is equal to b auxor c and this is how the function is written and this function the value actually the function name itself is getting assigned the value of b auxor c. So this is nothing but the return value from this function check bc which is b auxor c. We will cover the functions in more details in one of our modules during Railroad SDL crash course. But here just I want to tell you how a function call can be used as an operand in an expression. So I hope the operand concept is clear. If you have any doubts, please write down in the comment section. If you like this video, please hit the like button and also do not forget to subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you would get notified as soon as I upload the next video. Thank you very much.